All right, everyone, welcome back into another props video. Give me touch on the top prop bets for the London game between the New York Jets and the Minnesota Vikings. Let's go ahead and get into it. And so when we take a peek at this game, one, it is a little bit higher scoring than I would have thought, given how the Packers offense looked last week. Minnesota Vikings offense has looked good, you know, last week as well. So definitely an interesting game total that might have to do with the travel, with the field. Uh, but it is higher than I probably would have thought at the same time. Maybe, maybe not. You know, this Jets offense is probably better than it showed last week. The match against Denver, I think, was partially due to why they struggled. A little bit of chemistry issues going on with uh, Aaron Rodgers and Garrett Wilson. I think that is going to feel the, the Devontae Adams trades even more, especially. I mean, either way, if the Jets win or lose this game, that, that's going to inspire the trade talks either way. Uh, but then you got the Vikings. The Vikings are going to be two and a half point favorites. Look good in the first half last week. That was a little bit, a lot due actually to the Packers just beating themselves and the Vikings being good enough to be able to score on those plays and, and those possessions. But then we also saw kind of, I would say Kevin O'Connell's like bad side of his coaching where you let teams come back. Now that was more so I think due to the Packers just being more talented per se, like they are. The Vikings are a great team as well. Like We're not taking anything away. They won the game, and they did what they had to do to win as well. They are playing good, winning football. I just think that the second half could have been a little bit of, okay, that's how you beat the Vikings. And the Jets, for the most part, are not going to be a team that are going to make, yeah, I say that, but a team that's not going to make stupid penalties and going to make stupid mistakes. Rodgers won't. His offensive line might, if you, if you guys heard those quotes. Now, looking at the injury report for both teams, Good to go. The, the The Jets are good to go, and the Vikings are good to go. They actually might get TJ Hawkinson back a little bit earlier than I thought, which obviously is going to be huge. That's that's really the difference maker for the Vikings. Uh, TJ Hawkinson is arguably the best tight end in the league, and if they get him back, whoo that could be huge. But we take a peek at the profits that we're getting here for this game, and we are getting some pretty good edges, especially with the fantasy score lines. Uh, Alan Lazard to get over 7.5 for a fantasy score is one of the better bets that we have. Tyler Conklin to get over six for a fantasy score to me is the best bet that we have, especially both of those compared to the average sportsbook line. Do like the over there. Garrett Wilson over 12 for a fantasy score. I don't know if I need to get there. I don't exactly like that one too much. Mike Williams to get over seven for a fantasy score. I don't mind, but I also really like Mike Williams to, to just get over 2.5 receptions. I think he has a good chance to do that. Uh, and, and on top of that, guys, like Aaron Rodgers, you know, looking at the projection data, Projection Day does like him to get over his passing yards. That being said, I don't know. This is an overseas game. I could see Rodgers just not having a good game. He is he's a guy that likes things his own way, and maybe that could be enough to throw him off. But let's just talk about all these, these profits that are popping up and really why they're popping up and, and why I think they're good bets. First and foremost, Tyler Conklin, guys, he's playing 90% of the snaps. Had a good game in week three. Probably should have had a good game in week four. Took a while for him to get some targets and kind of get going. Had 5.7 DK points last week. Targets were there. Ended up with more targets last week than he did in week three when he had that big game. Four receptions, only 17 receiving yards. Do expect that to be a little bit higher, especially given this matchup against the Minnesota Vikings. Not all that good against opposing tight ends. So I think that's a spot where the Jets can choose to attack the Vikings, and that's a bet that I like. Now we look at Alan Lazard. Alan Lazard has been more productive, I think maybe just as productive as Garrett Wilson Whatever, the, the gap is extremely close. And so those lines that we're getting where there's a big prop line difference between their fantasy scores, that probably is a little bit too high. Why is Alan Lazard being involved this much? He has Aaron Rodgers' trust. That's as simple as it is. As a Packers fan, one of the more frustrating things was that Rodgers just would not give the ball to like rookies or, or younger players because he just simply didn't trust them to do the right things. And actually, if you watch the Packers game last week, you, you kind of saw both sides of that. Like Wicks... Is a great receiver, I think, but one of Jordan Love's INTs were simply because Wicks didn't get his sh shoulder around, flip his head. That's a that's a play that like Aaron Rodgers. I'm like, nope, you're you're out of the game for the rest of the game, or I'm not giving you targets. You cost us an INT and probably a touchdown. So Alan Lazard simply has Rodgers' trust, and that's why he's playing. Like last year, guys, last year Lazard barely played. You know, like it, it's 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 as simple as that. He has his trust, so he's going to play a lot. And so if he continues to play 85% of the snaps, yeah, I think he has a good chance to get that over, um, especially while Garrett Wilson is still demanding a lot of uh, attention. And then Brees Hall as well. Brees Hall is demanding a lot of defensive attention. 
Thus, you're not going to spend a lot of effort guarding Alan Lazard or Tyler Conklin for that matter, and that's why they're getting targeted a decent amount. Aaron Rodgers knows that he can find the weak spot in a defense and exploit it. Now, Mike Williams is certainly an interesting one. Only 58% of the snaps last week, which if this game is going to be decently high scoring, I would imagine that would lead to a little bit more Mike Williams snaps. Like Even if we get 65% of the snaps, that's huge to me. And then I think he would be able to get his overs as well. But regardless, I really like all the prop bets that we are getting here. Now, while we're here looking at the snaps, I do think it's worth pointing out, Brees Hall still saw the same amount of snaps. I don't think you should be all too worried about Brees Hall at this point. Uh, my worry with Brees Hall at the start of the season was that Braylon Allen was a great running back and really just underdrafted. We have seen that come to fruition, but Braylon Allen, Still only getting about 30% of the snaps, and I just don't see that changing. Like, But there's not a bet that I would want to bet on those two specifically. So with that, all these bets that are popping up as good bets for prize picks, I'm I'm good to go with. I, I like those a lot. Then we look at underdog. Underdog's like a little bit slower getting their lines out right now. Um, really, the only one that I like here would be Mike Williams to get over 2.5 receptions. That, that would literally be it because the board is pretty limited here for those bets that we were getting for them. And then real quickly, let's just took, take a look at like the average lines that we are getting. Uh, in terms of like gain of projected edge, we do have Aaron Rodgers. Uh, all of his passing yards props are going to be ones that are projected to be good edges for us because the projection data does like the over a little bit more. Uh, so really across the board, we're going to get good edges for this. Uh, the best one would be Rodgers to get over 224.5 passing yards on BetMGM. Uh, they're they're that is a 50-50 split. The average line would have it slightly higher as about a 50-50 split as well. So already a slightly decent edge. You could pair that up with Garrett Wilson as well. So not a bad bet there. Uh, and then while we're there, we'll stick here with the Minnesota Vikings as well. Uh, Jalen Naylor under his receiving yards is one that's kind of popping up. I don't know if I agree with that. I think Jalen Naylor is a good talent. But let's just talk about the Minnesota Vikings now. So Naylor did see a a pretty significant drop in his snaps. And so really just any bet that's regarding Naylor, that's just not bet. He is someone that has looked good. But really with Jordan Addison being back, playing 66% of the snaps, uh, he was the second best uh, weapon there. But also, they're playing with the lead for most of the game. So they weren't running out a lot of three receiver sets. And so to me, I think Naylor betting on him to get about 50% of the snaps again and kind of proving that he deserves it. You know, I, I don't mind that to bet him over that receiving yards total, but at the same time, probably feels like we're forcing it. But looking at the snaps from last week, I don't think it's going to be all that clear as to what we can expect. Uh, what I was surprised by is Mund and Josh Oliver really splitting the work. But again, I think that's due to Oliver probably being a little bit of a better blocker than Mund. To me, what was most surprising about last week was the amount of snaps that Aaron Jones got. It, it somewhat in a way seemed like this was on purpose because he was playing in Lambeau again, you know, against his former team that they were intentional about getting him more snaps. That's the only way I can really explain it because Ty Chandler has looked pretty solid this season. And so that was a little bit strange. So now we jump into some prize picks prop bets that we have here for the Minnesota Vikings. Definitely a tighter board for sure. Um, and really the way I kind of look at it is, you know, like with someone like Johnny Munn, he is more of a pass catcher for them. And so if you think the Jets are going to win this game, which maybe you do, maybe that's your upset pick, then you would want to bet Munn to get over his fantasy score. That's not terrible. That's like two catches. He is a good pass catcher. Like I don't hate that, but not not one that we need to go out of our way to target. One of my favorite uh, actual like sportsbook bets was like Sam Darnold to get over 1.5 passing touchdowns because you can get at like plus 105. And again, if that line is the way that it like that game total is is what's suggesting that I would see him getting that over. But yeah, there's really not that many great bets here for prize picks. Let's jump in underdog. And so for underdog, I mean this was kind of popping up here on prize picks as well. Aaron Jones for under his rush attempts. I do probably think that they will give Ty Chandler a little bit more work in this game, especially after giving Aaron Jones such a healthy workload last week. They're going to want him to last, and that's the way that you make him last. You know, you, you limit his snaps. Uh, another one that I don't mind would be Justin Jefferson to get over six receptions. Obviously, the average sportsbook line is, is really liking him to get uh, over 5.5 receptions, giving him a 54% chance for that to hit. Uh, but at the same time, if this game is higher scoring, and I keep saying that, like, the Jets offense was just so bad last week that 40 points seems like a lot. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, a, it's, I know it's not a high scoring game, but it does seem like a high scoring game to me, if that makes sense. Um, but if it's a more pass heavy script, then 
I don't mind Justin Jefferson over six receptions. I do expect Sauce to give him some defensive attention, and maybe you could go with Jordan Addison to get over three receptions. I think this one has a good chance to be a push. And honestly, I might use this with those other bets that we were getting. Now, I do want to call out on, on prize picks, that is. Now, I do want to call out that Ty Chandler, over his rush yards on prize picks, is maybe one that we could use as well. That's off by three or so compared to the average sportsbook line and also compared to underdog. So that's a seemingly good edge that we have as well. Potential for a middle there. So let's go ahead and get into my favorite bets for this game. And so obviously we're going to be chasing those two really good bets that we had. Uh, Alan Lazard over 7.5 for her fantasy score. And then Tyler Conklin to get over 6 for her fantasy score. Going to go with Johnny Munn for over 3.5 for her fantasy score. Again, hopefully this game stays close. So he's on the field a little bit more than Josh Oliver. Johnny Munn's been basically at that over in every single game, right around it. I shouldn't say he's gotten the over every time, but he's been right around that line. Mike Williams to get over 2.5 receptions. You could do seven for a fantasy score as well, but Mike Williams, I'm more or less just betting on him getting closer to 65% of the snaps. Regardless, it should be a good line for him. And then Ty Chandler, over 21.5 rush yards. We saw that line is off by three or so compared to the average sportsbook line and compared to the underdog line. That does correlate decently well with Aaron Jones can under 15.5 rush attempts, which is a bet that you guys can use on underdog as well. 